In this uh, video, we're going to look at uh, a few binomial distribution type uh, questions. First of all, though, I want to go over once again the difference between discrete and continuous data. Discrete and continuous random variables. When you have discrete variables, it, they're data that are related to numerical responses that ar arise from a counting process. Total points scored by a football team, number of times a car runs a stoplight, number of cars in a parking lot, the number of questions missed. In other words, you could not miss 1.7236 questions. With continuous random variables, uh, these are data related to numerical responses that arise from a measuring process, like height, of a person, weight of a child, temperature. Continuous random variables are usually heights, weights, temperatures, pressures. The best example is uh, the number of cans of soda in your refrigerator is discrete. The amount of soda in the can, though, is continuous because, you know, in a 12-ounce can of soda, you're going to have 11.9992 or... It's a volume there. So when we're when we're measuring things, it's continuous. Discrete things are very countable. Now, in terms of deciding whether a particular distribution is binomial, Poisson, or geometric, in the binomial distribution, we have n independent and identical trials with the same probability of success. Um, with the Poisson distribution you have a number of events occurring within a time interval. They'll only give you an average of things like the number of the average number of errors per page, the average number of times a uh, policeman uh, views someone running a stoplight in any given hour. With a geometric distribution, it's used for situations similar to the binomial, but we uh, we want to know the probability of the first event or success happening. Uh, number of games before the first win if you on average take three games to, to get a win. The number of calls before the first sale. The number of accidents before the first death. Don't be fooled. You might have something like, well, what is the probability of making your first sale on the second, third, or fourth call? That could also be a geometric type problem. But let's look at some binomial distribution problems. These type problems, they might give you n and p and ask you for the mean variance and standard deviation. 57% uh, of men say they'll watch the Super Bowl. You randomly select 10. In other words, they're giving me n and p. Uh, construct a binomial distribution and graph, identifying the shape of the distribution. All right, let's let's work all of these using my uh, binomial distribution calculator. Uh, you should have a copy of that file. If not, you can go to my StatCave uh, website. And uh, if you look down at the description of this video, it'll have that. Uh, I'll put a link there to the StatCave. So let's work these problems. Our uh, first problem was to find the mean variance and standard deviation of the binomial distribution with an n of 107 and a p of 0.43. They're only asking for the mean variance and standard deviation. I can do it right here with my binomial distribution calculator template. So I put in my n of 107. I put in my p of 0.43. Bazinga, the mean is 46 right here. 46.01. My variance is 26.2257. If they wanted to round that to three decimal places, it would be 26.223. My standard deviation is 5.121 rounded to um, three decimal places. It's really that easy. How about this question? 57% of men say they will watch the Super Bowl. You randomly select 10 men and are asked to find the following probabilities. All right, 57 men, 57%, uh, so my n is 10 because I randomly selected 10 men. 57%, I change that to a decimal, 0 0.57. Boom, now 
the probability of exactly 6. Hmm, right there it is, 0.2462 rounded to three decimal places would be 0.246. The probability of x being greater than or equal to 4. That's at least 4, 4 or more. So I look to the right of 4 under at least. The probability that x is greater than or equal to 4 would be 0 0.9194, 0 0.919 rounded to three decimal places. The probability that x is less than 5. That means 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So that is uh, at most 4. So the probability that x is less than 5 would be 0 0.2207, at most 4. The other thing I could do, I could, I could add up the probabilities of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, but I guarantee you they will add up to 0 0.2207. You just have to understand the difference between greater than or equal to, greater than, less than, or less than or equal to. Less than 5 is at most 4. Let's say that we have been asked to construct a binomial distribution and graph identifying the shape of the distribution for the scenario where 22% of children watch Rugrats and you randomly select seven children. All right, I randomly select seven children, so my n is equal to seven. 22%, uh, so my p is equal to 0 0.22. They want, I gotta hit the enter button. They want the binomial distribution. All right, the binomial distribution, I would set it up. It is basically, here is x and p of x. So it would be this, these numbers. You hear my dog who wants to answer this question. So my um, binomial distribution, here is x. Here is probability of x. I mean, if I needed to, I could copy this. Control C. I could actually go over into another uh, um, sheet here. Do a paste special, paste values only. Let's see if it'll let me. Paste values only. There you go. There is the binomial distribution. If you need the graph, you actually have the graph. You've got a good picture of it. Here, I'm going to drag this over. I do not advise dragging your graphs around, but you can tell that this is definitely uh, right tailed. Um, if you look at my smooth graph that I include on these, whoops, um, let's move this one out of the way. Well, I'm trying to move it. I'm going to delete this one so you can see it. But you can see that it is definitely right tailed. You could change this to a histogram if you wanted to. Uh, I don't recommend playing around with the, the graph types, but you can easily change it to a histogram. But you can definitely see, uh, if you wanted a bar graph, just visualize bars here where the uh, dots are. Uh, but in Excel, uh, you can change it to a bar graph, but you could easily look at this and say, hey, that's right-tailed.